And why would it typically, why are some BPOs have that? Why would, why would an agent go outside that area? Uh, that's a great question. Sometimes, see, BPO companies have their own valuation um, softwares built into these things. Okay. And if it's something exceeds their uh, tolerances, they might say, no, we can't use that one. Or their quality control people will kick it back and say, you know, you took a double wide mobile home and compared it to a single family house. We can't do that. Right. Okay. We need you to find another suitable comp. So instead of going back in time, which is one of your parameters, you have to stay within 120. So the best thing to do is expand it out distance wise and try to keep it as close as you can so that you get a better indication of today's value. Mm. Okay. Um, so you look at your proximity, you know, to the comps, are they fairly close? And I just touched on uh, another, another piece right there just a minute ago. Okay. Look at the properties. What are they comparing it to? Mm. Okay. Are they ranch houses compared to ranch houses? Right. True. Okay. We've seen BPOs come through where ranch houses were compared to double wide home, mobile, you know, manufactured homes. Yep. Yeah. Big red flag, yeah. huge red flag. Okay. If you see that really question that BPO. Okay. So mm -hmm. we've seen it before. Um, and people that are new, maybe have not seen this yet, but, but we've seen that where, a seller of a note will provide a BPO right. and then I get my own BPO and they're very different. Yes. How, how can that be? And we <laughs> get into this argument of, well, my BPO is better, and <laughs> yours is better, but how do we reconcile that? Like, well, first of all, why? And then how do we reconcile that? Okay. Well, when you get multiple BPOs and there's a wide range of valuations, okay. Why look at the comps that they're comparing to. You know, um, is there an average condition house that, that is the subject? Are they comparing it and valuating it off of nice rehabbed homes within a mile? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you've got a difference of condition. Move in ready versus average condition. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you're, you're going to have an inflated value. Now look at the other one, maybe another BPO has average condition comps versus the average condition subject. Now you're looking at more of a, of a tighter valuation. I'm not saying you're pinpoint, but you're at a tighter valuation because you're comparing apples to apples instead of apples to oranges. So in so the case where they're comparing it to a fair market, is that because that's just what the agent chose or was that an instruction that they received? Typically it's an in instruction. Yeah. Okay. At the beginning of the instructions, you know, there's an instruction sheet that they send, and it's basically states if the property area is being driven by REO or distressed properties, then let's use distressed properties. But if it's a fair market area where most of the uh, transactions are being done in a fair market way with an arm or arm's length transactions, then start using those fair market comps. Yeah. But if you have to use REO, explain why, mm. okay? Is the, is the property in lousy condition? Well, some REO properties might be in similar condition. So mm. you might want to use those sure. to, to you know, compare to the property. So one of the first things I do when I get a BPO is I go down to the pictures. I want to see the property. I want to yeah. see, and I look at the comments the agent often puts inside of them, right? right? Now, these are typically ones that the sellers provide to me to kind of get a feel. Mm -hmm. Because I know when <clears throat> we worked at the hedge fund, we ordered multiple BPOs for the same property. We may order two, one from different companies. Right. And we usually ordered a selling BPO too. So when we want to boost the value of the property to our the end note buyer, exactly, we had a high BPO that was and most people didn't bother to order one because they didn't want to spend the money to buy a BPO. They want to use the one I have and kind of find out that that value is wrong. Um, right. Is there a way when you look at these BPOs that you can, without diving too deep, know the quality of the person behind it versus somebody who went there, took four pictures of the property, pulled a quick AVM from their system and did nothing else and spent four minutes on the project and rightfully so, 
Yeah. Well, this is my part B question, but answers first. The BPO cost me a hundred bucks. On average, how much is the agent who's doing all this work that we depend on making of that hundred bucks? Oh man, I'm telling you, this is a sore spot in the industry. <laughs> okay. Typically anywhere between 40 and $65 is typically what the BPO agent will be doing. Mm-hmm. And some folks are, you know, they, they run a, a operation based on that. They'll do BPOs and just yep. large numbers of them. Okay. And that's going to be a copy and paste and just throw it in there and, and let it go. What you were just talking about, Dave, is the comments. This is how you can tell whether some uh, um, an agent has put some time into the BPO. Look at the comments. How in-depth are they? Okay. If you've got the same exact comments in 10 different fields of that BPO, you know, it was just a copy and paste and hurry, hurry, hurry. But if you've got comments in like comp one is inferior due to uh, uh, gross living area, um, smaller garage and smaller lot size. I adjusted, you know, $6,000 for this. Okay. That's more of a detailed comment in there. And you know that they put in some time and effort into doing the research and coming up with a really good valid conclusion versus just spitballing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So I, I, one of the things that I do uh, mm-hmm. a lot of the time, especially if it's a BPO that was provided by the seller yep. is I'll take that BPO and I'll compare it. First of all, I'll compare it to whatever online research, research that I've done. If yep. we're way far off already, that's a red flag. Yes. Um, even if they're close though, a lot of the time, probably maybe not always, but a lot of the time, um, depending on how what the numbers are and how comfortable I am with the spread, all those kinds of things. But I will call uh, whoever did the report and I'll, Mm -hmm. and and I say right up front, I'm not trying to sway you one way or another. I'm just looking for accuracy. So can you just tell me about the property? Tell me about the neighborhood, how stuff's selling, you know, and, and get. Most investors don't know they could do that on the BPO shows the agent's name. Call them up. Ask me questions. Sure. And everybody's got Google. So even if you don't really want to call that agent, maybe you're not comfortable doing so, call another real estate company in that area. Pick up the phone. Mm-hmm. Find somebody we'll who's been... That. Some new tricks that you know we're talking online. But yeah. for the BPO of those people, you have your solds on top. You're, you're for sales. You have your solds, right? I really don't care about the for sales unless something's changing in the area. I don't care what someone wants for the house. I care about what is, and I focus things like the area, mm-hmm. square footage, right, GLA. I look mm-hmm. at the fact of, you know, the, uh, the bedrooms, bathrooms. I don't care yeah. how many rooms it has. I look right. at those kind of big things. And if I see a 3-1, when I have a 3-3 or 4-2, I kind of diminish it because I don't know how much a bathroom in that area is worth. Another thing area. I look at is if that agent's not from the area, mm-hmm. that's a big thing to me. Unless sure. an agent's good, and they drove 40 minutes to a property, I may be interested, but if they're a BPO, quote unquote, typical BPO agent who's just making 40 bucks kick and don't know anything about real estate, yeah, I feel from my point of view, if the agent isn't local to property, they're not going to know much about the area. Yeah, right. Then you're getting a BPO based strictly on data, strictly. Yeah. And that is market um, dependent. Okay, it it doesn't say anything about the agent being able to choose different comps. Mm -hmm. Okay, it basically they're they're just grabbing data saying, okay, based on this data, this is what the valuation should be. Well, they don't have enough variables in there that they're taking into consideration to be able to adjust those comps to the right ones, which will give you a tighter valuation. Yeah. I mean, that, that sounds like, uh, I'm sorry if I lost somebody there, but you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it really does mean a lot when somebody like you're saying, Dave is, is from the area and knows that market. Yeah. You know? One of the other things I find is I, again, uh, if I call another one of the red flag, uh, items is yeah. if I call and I end up leaving a message and then they never call me back. Yeah. Huge red flag. 
then, yeah. then I need some other, I need somebody that I can talk to. I need somebody that has seen the property that I can have a discussion. Like you said, with. Nick, people, there are factories of BPO agents, but their There's full-time certain. job is go out, do four a day, five a day, six a day, make the money, give the broker some of the money, right? Because mm -hmm. in your situation, you're the broker and the BPO. If you, you had a BPO person below you, what would that BPO person make, you think? 